Welcome back to Mongo's Garage. Saturday evening here at the garage. Actually, we're not in the garage any longer. We're at the house, but putting together the video from today. Got something special for you guys. We were busy today. Got the bed. As you can see there, it's bolted back to the truck. We did a bunch of work today and got everything ready to spray. I wanted to get it in primer so that I can block the primer out and go ahead and get it in sealer tomorrow after church but you can see here we've uh, done a lot of work got a lot of the uh, little dents and things worked out of the bed of course we primed the bottom of it <clears throat> while it was upside down once we got it put on the truck there you can see I worked the top end of the bed got it all where I needed it to be and then uh, wiped everything down got it all good and clean Braden spent quite a bit of time today especially on the inside of the bed trying to get it ready to go Lots of uh, loose paint, scaly paint in there that needed to be cleaned up. Wasn't too much worried with the floor. As always, the floor of the bed is what's going to get beat up the most. And I do believe Braden is going to end up putting a bed mat in this truck when we're all through with it. So I uh, had him essentially feather out all the sides in the front. Got all that ready to paint so that it would uh, at least look pretty good while we were painting it. I'm sorry, after we got it painted. So you see me here up inside of the bed. KJ took all these videos while we were going at it. Uh, trying to get the fan adjustment right there. It was a little too broad. So I'm using a uh, not the most expensive Harbor Freight gun. I think this is a 139 gun. Uh, it is the HVLP. High velocity, high whatever, low pressure. But uh, yeah. You're running it at exactly 28 psi. That's what it says, and that's 28 psi with the uh, with the gun open. And running a 1.7 tip, uh, putting it on pretty light first coat, let it tack up a little bit, and then I do come back later and put on a wetter second coat, trying to get good coverage, especially here in the bed. I didn't want to get too thick because I'm not planning on uh, sanding the inside of the bed, blocking it out, obviously. We're just going to, uh, wanted to get some material on it to get it all sealed up. Not that the, this is just a straight up primer, it's not a sealer, but I wanted to get something down, that way we could bond to it. Uh, as you can see there, moving along pretty well. I was up in the bed, so I actually ended up taking my boots off. I didn't want to get the grime off the bottom of my boots on the bed as we were working it. I did lay it down pretty heavy on the base there, so you can uh, make sure that, you know, any bleed through or whatever, it, uh, it looked pretty good. Put her down pretty good. We used about uh, just a little, little less than a half a gallon of paint which essentially uh, this primer runs a one-to-one -one mix, so a half a gallon of paint ends up being uh, an actual gallon of material because I'm using a half gallon of uh, reducer as well. KJ did real good for me this time. Uh, while I was paint painting, he was in the background. When he wasn't doing the video, he was in the background uh, mixing up more paint for uh, to keep me going. That way we didn't mess around. Got the gun turned in pretty good it uh it really held the the overspray down to a minimum this time uh i think turning that pressure down and being able to control the fan really helped with that <clears throat> not i wouldn't say i'm a professional with the hvlp guns but uh i am definitely getting better so you can see all done in the bed uh working our way down around the bottom in the back there, I got that all covered. Make sure I got everything inside. And then we just started running front to back. Uh, again, the first coat was pretty light on a horizontal. Ran out of paint there. Uh, I think this is actually the beginning of the second coat there on the back. Like I said, everything was horizontal on the first coat. And I think you'll see me come in here shortly with a vertical coat. Uh, making sure you overlap the paint we get a good coverage that way i uh i am going to block down the side so i did put quite a bit of material on so that i could get rid of any high spots low spots whatever it may be again hopefully tomorrow after church i'll go want to uh block this thing out and get it in uh get it in sealer that way uh let that set until monday 
then uh, Monday hopefully get it in color. We can get all the all the plastic and everything off of it. This is the first time I've used the uh, I guess you would call it masking film. That's 3M masking film there. I got it at a Sherwin Williams store. Mm, not real sure if I like it yet. I did buy a big uh, a big roll of it, the 16 foot wide roll, just so we can get it uh, you know as as wide as the truck. As we move forward, I'll end up using it, especially on the front, because I'm going to be painting everything black, uh, the fenders and stuff, and I don't want to get those covered in overspray like I've already done. Uh, you guys can go back to part two of this video series and check out how I covered all that stuff in overspray. But you can see here, this is the vertical uh, the vertical coat. I wanted to make sure that I got good coverage on everything. Of course, the bottom's all been painted already once. Uh, my brothers have both pointed out to me that I skipped the uh, portion over the passenger side uh, fuel fill there, and you can just see I just kind of went right past it. But again, uh, once I did this vertical coat, I did come back later with another horizontal coat. So it ended up with three good wet coats. I'm sorry, one tack coat and then two really good wet coats. Again, this is that vertical coat that I'm doing there on the driver's side. I uh, wanted to make sure, again, you know, 90 degrees. Pretty happy with how flat I got everything. There is still a little bit of work, I think, that could be done. Uh, again, this isn't, a, this isn't a show truck or a SEMA truck. It's just uh, it's going to be a daily driver. So, And especially with that really light paint on it, I don't know that it's going to be, uh, you know, you're not going to see a whole lot of the, the body uh, imperfections anyway. But that bed is in a lot better condition than it was when I got started on it. It was, uh, it was in really bad shape. Lots of dents, if you guys remember. I don't know, was it this side? No, it was actually the other side that had the big crease in it. This side just had the, the rear of this side was all pushed in and uh, needed a lot of work on it. But, uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. It's, uh, it's pretty straight. Like I said, I'm going to block it out tomorrow, see what else I might have to do before I put it in sealer, but I would definitely want to get it in sealer tomorrow, make it, uh, make it ready to paint for Monday, see what happens there. But uh, yeah, the film, I guess, worked out pretty well. I really haven't looked at anything to see, <coughs> excuse me, to see if i uh, got any overspray on the cab, but uh, I think we covered it pretty well. I don't think that we did. I needled it down there. I did notice the inside of those uh, fender wells was pretty light, so I needled it down and got a little more paint in there just to be sure that it was covered. So I think KJ is going to give us a quick walk around here of the finished product. Uh, yeah, it look, doesn't look too bad. Had to do a lot of work on that corner right there. It was all beat in. So I got up in there, got in behind it, and pushed it out, and then uh, worked it. Um, bed interior looks pretty good we have to put new seam sealer in all the seams there Chevy bolts their beds together so you're gonna have to seam seal it uh, Braden was able to get all that seam sealer the old seam sealer out so now that we've got it in primer we can we can do some new seam sealer <coughs> KJ also set up my phone there at the end so we could do uh, or during the paint job he wanted to do uh, a real quick uh, Time lapse, which you can see there. Brad's holding the hose for me. He did a real good job keeping it off the paint. Uh, turned out pretty nice, little 22 second time lapse. But that's all for now. So uh, come back again when you guys want to watch some more of uh, SpongeBob Square Body. And by all means, you got to go out check out my project BOV1. That's all. Mongo out, guys.